Assalamualaikum and welcome to our eighth program in the operating system program series. And today we plan to cover the concept of virtual memory. Before we uh, go to our today's session, uh, let's have a little recap of our last program. In the previous program, we discussed the concept of monoprogramming, modeling multiprogramming, multiprogramming with the fixed partitioning and variable partitioning, and memory management with bitmaps and memory management with linked lists. Uh, today's program, we plan to cover the following topics. We'll look at the swapping concept. We'll see the virtual memory concepts, paging concepts, uh, page replacement and page replacement algorithms in which we'll cover not recently used algorithm, first in first out algorithm, second chance algorithm, clock algorithm. And after we have looked at this, then we'll uh, look at some uh, memory management commands. Uh, let's go to our, uh, our today's discussion on swapping. Gentlemen, you know that in time sharing systems, at any given time, there are virtually hundreds and thousands of people using the system. And for the system, it is impossible to have all their processes in the memory at any given time. Now, what the system does is, it keeps only a part of the processes in the memory and remaining processes on the disk. And then uh, swaps back and forth the processes from the memory to the disk and from the disk to the memory. And this concept is called swapping. The shifting of the processes from the memory to the disk and from the disk to the memory is called swapping. Associated with the uh, memory management, we have another extremely important concept of virtual memory. Uh, what if our, the program size is larger than the memory available? If the program as a whole cannot fit in the available memory, what should we do? In the older days, the concept of overlay was used in which the program was divided into manageable units. And this job was done by the programmer. If the program size is larger, then the programmer would divide the program into overlays, what we call units with what we call overlays. And at any given time, some overlays will fit in the memory and remaining will stay on the disk. And system will swap overlays back and forth. Although the swapping was done by the system, but the dividing the program into overlays was done physically by the programmers. And that was extremely tedious. The improvement in that overlay concept to bring the efficiency in the system was the virtual memory concept, where the program associated data and associated stacks, only that part is kept in the memory, which is fitable in the available memory and remaining is kept on the disk and the program swaps the uh, back and forth between the disk and between the uh, memory in order to accommodate a larger size program. And this concept is called virtual memory concept. In the virtual memory, basically the program generates the swappable addresses. The, in, in, in the virtual memory, the program generates virtual addresses and keep track of that. And all the virtual addresses constitute the virtual address space. Similarly, on each machine, memory has certain addresses. In all computing system, have memory addresses. Now the issue remains that how to map the virtual memory with the physical memory in the system. And that job is done by the memory management unit of the system. 
uh, I'll uh, repeat once again that the program generates virtual addresses which constitute virtual address space and virtual address space is subdivided into allocable units which are called pages. And similarly, the physical memory of the system is also divided into what we call page frames. How it is done? Now let's look at that. In this diagram, we see uh, the CPU, and we have uh, the in, in the CPU package, we have the memory management unit here. The CPU sends the virtual addresses, which are obviously, as we discussed, generated by the program to the memory management unit. And then memory management unit sends the physical addresses to the memory after mapping the virtual addresses with the physical addresses. How it is done? Uh, let's look at another diagram, which it is. In this diagram, we see it more clearly. We see here, we have virtual address spaces. And these are basically virtual pages. We see here, the virtual address spaces and virtual, we can have more number of virtual pages than the physical memory addresses. And it is important to remember that the size of the virtual page and size of the page frame must, must be equal. Okay? And it is primarily the job of the, mer of the memory management unit to map the addresses, virtual address space with the physical memory address spaces. We see here this number 7, it is mapped to uh, this physical memory address 28k to 32k. This uh, 5 is which is from 36k to 40k memory address, it is mapped to the page here and the physical memory which is 20k to 24k. I think uh, now it makes clear, we see here that the page size is from 0k to 4k, 4k to 8k, 8k to 12k, 12k to 16k, equal size pages, 4k each. And here, here we see the page frames, 0 to 4k, 4 to 8k, 8 to 12k, 12 to 16k. It means our virtual pages are exactly of the same size as we have the page frames in the physical memory. Okay? And it is the job of the memory management unit to map a page in the virtual address space to a page frame in the physical memory address. How do we keep track of the virtual address space as well as uh, physical memory addresses? How do we keep that? We do it with the help of a page table. How uh, does a page table looks like? Let's see. Uh, primarily, the purpose of the page table is to map the virtual page onto the page frames. We see here, uh, uh, this bit is for uh, caching disabled. We see whether a page is referenced. If in the memory, uh, some program calls this particular page, uh, a bit is set here. If the page is referenced, it is 1. If a page is not referenced in the, at any given stance, it is uh, set, uh, set as 0. Similarly, if the page is modified or not, then protection bit, present absent bit, and page frame number. Right? This is the page table, uh, a, just portion of the page table entry. And this is how we keep track of the, how we map the physical page, pages uh, of the memory with the virtual pages. Uh, once we have discussed the virtual memory concept, the page and page frame concept, Obviously, uh, we have to move pages back and forth from the memory uh, to the disk and from the disk to the memory. Uh, it is extremely complex task. How do we uh, swap the pages from the memory to the disk and from the disk to the memory? There are a number of page replacement algorithms. Let's say uh, we need to bring in a new page in the memory. And in order to bring in a new page in the memory, we have to replace a page which is already existing in the memory. We have to do that. And that 
concept is generally termed as page fault. Whenever a page fault occurs, we have to uh, replace a page in the memory with a page uh, from the disk. It can have, uh, page replacement can have uh, various uh, alterations. Number one, if the page is dirty, if the page is modified, uh, then obviously we would like that page to be written on the disk before we replace it. But however, if the page is not modif modified, then obviously we can overwrite that page. Uh, and this information is kept as we have seen in the page table, whether the page was referenced, the bit is set to 1. If the page is not referenced, bit is set to 0. Similarly, if the page is modified, bit is set to 1. If the page is not modified, then it is set to 0. And before a page re replacement occurs, if the page is dirty, it is saved on the disk and then replaced. If it is not di dirty, it can be overwritten. I think it's the same thing which we uh, discussed that page fault primarily forces us the choice which page must be removed to make room for an incoming pages. And we discussed that if the page is modified, it must be saved before it is replaced. And if the page is not modified, we can just overwrite it. And one thing is very important in the page replacement that we should choose our page replacement algorithm should help us choose only those pages which are least referenced. And if a page is very frequently uh, referenced uh, in the memory, then we should not replace that. And we have a number of algorithms which we'll discuss now uh, and which are uh, being practiced in the uh, computing system arena. Uh, dear students, now let's discuss the page replacement algorithms. Obviously, we would like to have the most optimal algorithm. Most optimal algorithm, of course, would be where the page which is to be referenced, let's say 100 instructions after or a million instructions later, we replace that page. The, the objective here is that we bring the pages in the memory in the sequence they are referenced in the program, but that is not practical. If a page is to be referenced after a million instructions, there is no fun of keeping that page in the memory. Although the most optimal uh, page replacement algorithm is easier to describe that you only bring the pages in the sequence they will be referenced in the program and as such you don't have to uh, swap the pages back and forth. But this program or obviously computer won't know that when which program is referenced after immediately after this instruction or 100 instructions later or 200 instruction later or 1000 instructions later. Obviously program won't know. Although the optimal algorithm is easier to describe, it is virtually impossible to implement. So the computer scientists have devised certain other algorithms which are uh, practically implementable. And one of them is not recently used algorithm. Now let's uh, look at how the not recently used algorithm works. In this uh, not recently used algorithm, each page has a reference bit and a modified bit. And this is set when page is referenced or modified. I think we discussed this, that a reference bit is set to 1 when it is referenced in certain uh, point of time and 0 if it is not referenced and similarly modified bit is set. And once the reference and modified bit are set, then pages are classified in class 0 from not reference and not modified to class 1, not reference and modified to class 2, not reference, not modified, and class 3, reference and modified. Obviously, we see here class 0 is uh, practically impossible, not reference, not modified, but it primarily uh, comes from this class 2. If it is reference not modified and the clock interrupt comes, then it changes to 0 from uh, reference not modified to not reference not modified. Because of the class clock interrupt at any specific time, the, uh, the reference bit is, can be set from 
uh, 1 to 0. And once we have uh, set all these classes, we try to remove. Once we have set all these classes, after evaluating, once we have uh, uh, set the classes, we try to remove only that page from the lower classes, from class 0 or class 1. That is, this not recently used algorithm uh, uh, provides us. The next algorithm which I will discuss is first in, first out algorithm. And first in, first out algorithm is the pages are sorted in the memory in the order they come. And the, the page that came the earliest is removed. But certainly that the page which came earliest may be a very heavily used page. And as such, we see this first in, first out algorithm is not very efficient. It has certain disadvantages. We see here the operating system in, in the first in, first out algorithm, operating system maintains a linked list of all the pages in the order they come into the memory. And page at the beginning of the list is replaced. And as I mentioned earlier, the disadvantage is that page in the memory, the longest, may be the often used page. As such, there is a, there is a little modification to that first in, first out algorithm that is second chance algorithm. How the second chance algorithm works? Let us look at the diagram. In this diagram, we see the, the, the sequence in which the page come in the memory, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And these are the time intervals where the, uh, at which the pages come, 0, 3, 7, 8, 12, 14, 15, and 18. And in the first come, first uh, serve algorithm, first in, first out algorithm, obviously, A is the first to come, A will be removed, right? Yet, that will have some disadvantage, as I mentioned earlier, that this A may be most heavily used algorithm. The, now, the second chance is a little modification of the first in, first out algorithm. How is that? If we see here that if the reference bit is set to 0, if the reference bit for the A is at any clock interval when we are evaluating which page to replace, we see if this is set to 0, we will simply overwrite this page, we will replace this page with a new page. If the reference bit is set to 0, we evaluate the pages to be removed and A comes first and we see A is the first page that came in the memory and reference bit is set to 0, we replace this page. If the reference bit for A is set to 1, then we do not replace A. We simply bring this page at the end of the list as a as the uh, newly loaded page from, from the tail of the uh, uh, process queue, we bring it at the head of the process queue and then again we keep on searching with B. If B the reference bit is set to 1, then again B will come here and we'll try our search until we find a page where the reference bit is set to 0. This means we are giving the pages with reference bit 1 a second chance for uh, staying in the, uh, in, in the memory. This is the uh, second chance algorithm. We simply do not remove the oldest page, but the page with the reference bit set to 1, we give it a second chance. Uh, from this, we can conclude that in the second chance algorithm, if the reference bit is set to 1, we give that page a second chance of staying in the memory and we evaluate the next page in the list. And if the next page also the reference bit is set to 1, we'll keep that page in the list uh, and bring it uh, at the head of the list and we'll continue our search until we'll find a page 
where the reference bit is set to zero and with which we can replace in, in, an incoming page. A little variation of uh, the implementation of the second chance algorithm is a clock algorithm. Uh, it is exactly the same as we have the second chance algorithm, but only the implementation is a little different. Uh, how the implementation of a clock algorithm works, let's look at a diagram. In this uh, diagram, we see the processes are in the list, uh, but they are arranged in, 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 in the, the clock uh, uh, formation. We see here A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. And the page on which head is there, we are evaluating that page. Whenever the page fault occur, the page the hand is pointing to is inspected. For example, at this time now, the page C is being ins inspected. And the action depends upon the R bit, which we uh, call the reference bit. If the reference bit is set to 0, we evict this page. For example, if the reference bit for this page C is set to 0, we will simply replace that, this with a new page from the disk. But if the uh, reference bit is set to 1, we clear uh, uh, R, this 1 will clear R with 0 and advance the hand to D. We will simili similarly evaluate this page D. If the R bit is set to 0, we will evict this page D. If R is set to 1, then we will change this uh, R from 1 to 0 and move the hand to E and so on. The clock. Uh, uh, algorithm is essentially a variation of the uh, second chance algorithm. Now let's look at uh, there are large number of uh, page replacement alg algorithms and obviously covering all these uh, is beyond the scope of uh, our discussion today. Uh, however, we would like to see uh, what algorithms are there and what are the general comments uh, about general evaluation of these algorithms. Uh, let's look at uh, this table. Uh, in this table, we see the optimal algorithm we discuss. It is not implementable, but it is useful as a benchmark. Not recently used algorithm is a very crude algorithm. First in, first out algorithm might throw out some important pages if we implement that. Second chance algorithm is a big improvement over first in, first out. Clock algorithm is realistic to implement. Then there are certain other algorithms which we did not discuss here. For example, uh, least recently used algorithm, excellent but difficult to implement exactly. Not frequently used algorithm, fairly crude approximation of uh, least recently used algorithm. Aging algorithm is efficient algorithm that approximates LRU. Working set algorithm, somewhat very expensive to implement. And working set clock is basically combination of working set and class algorithm. It is good and efficient algorithm to implement. Uh, dear students, now we'll show you some uh, memory management commands uh, in the Unix environment. Uh, two or three commands are extremely important and very frequently utilized by the system administration people. Uh, one of them is uh, vmstat. The other one is iostat. And then sometime we have to create some uh, swap files. And uh, now we'll uh, look at some slides how these uh, commands are executed. Uh, let's look at the vmstat command. In the uh, at the command prompt, if we type vmstat five, this command gives us the memory virtual memory statistics after every five seconds. Okay. Here we see procs, these RBW are primarily the threads. We see the memory statistics, how much uh, swap uh, blocks are there, how many are free. Then we get page statistics, then we get disk statistics, fault statistics, and CPU statistics. This vmstat command general uh, gives us the virtual memory statistics. And these are primarily the command output options. R, B, W, for example, R is the number of kernel threads 
in the dispatch queue, B is the blocked kernel threads, W is the swapped out LWPs waiting for uh, processing, swap, available sp swap space, how much is free, how many pages re reclaimed, kilobytes paid in, kilobytes paid out, and so on. Uh, this VM stat minus with the S switch gives us to show the system event since the system was last booted. How many ins, how many outs, how many uh, swapped in, how many faults taken. Uh, VM stat minus F, S gives us the swap statistics. We see how much swap blocks are there, how much are free. Then page, disk, fault, and CPU statistics. Uh, VM stat minus C gives us the statistics about the cache flushing. Uh, VM stat with the minus I gives us the interrupts, the clock, clock interrupts, how many total, and what is the rate. Uh, this command IU stat 5, it gives us the input output statistics after every 5 seconds. IU stat minus XTC uh, gives us the uh, disk statistics, uh, extended disk statistics. It means it is a little more detail of the IU stat on the disk. Uh, another important concept in the uh, virtual memory or memory management is making the swap file. And we use the command make file 20m and where we want to make this file slash file slash name of the file swap file. Here we want to create, a, for example, we want to make a file of 20 megabytes on UFS name, file system name slash files. Once we have made that file, now we want to activate the swap file. And for activate swap file, uh, we uh, use this command swap minus a slash file slash swap file. And we also, if we want to remove a swap, swap file, we have to go, uh, we have to use minus D switch. And that will create this swap file. Or we can use also, uh, to recover the disk space, we can then say remove swap minus swap file. This will uh, bring the space allocated to swap file back to the disk. Dear students, I think uh, this very much uh, wraps up our uh, today's discussion. And today we uh, looked at the swapping concept, the virtual memory concept, the paging concept, page replacement algorithms, and we also looked at some memory management commands. With this, we conclude our today's session. Allah Hafiz.